Thanks, firstly. Well, first of all, Peter, that was a very bold comment saying that you like Chicago more than New York. And I'm going to come on here on live TV and tell you I feel the exact same way. Chicago all the way. Also, you're from Toronto. Drake is from Toronto. Drake, if you happen to see this, hear this, find this, it is never too late. I'm right here. Anyway, firstly, back to the question at hand. We will be chatting with Gary Wiesinger and customers like Grid, Studio McGee, and Happy Feet. That's right, and we'll dive into our products with NetSuite experts. And of course, we're gonna have a little fun too. Kendall, anything that we're doing that's kind of crazy and out there today? I mean, I think starting with the NetSuite band here, first thing in the morning, was pretty crazy, no? Fair point, uh, but I also heard that there's going to be some interesting moments with customers like Empowered and the Intrepid Sea, Air and Space Museum. Looking forward to that. You are most certainly not wrong, but our viewers will just have to keep tuning in to find out. And now, let's hand it over to Christina, who is live from Keynote Hall. Christina, what was your take on the keynote? Thank you, Kendall. You knew I was gonna love this. You knew that this was gonna hit me in the heart of what I do every day as an account manager here with NetSuite. So, first of all, let's take it from the top. I loved that the first thing that we spoke about was ease. That is what makes NetSuite so amazing, the ease of use. We talked about LCS and how it's so important for all of your employees to be trained so that their training makes them even more proficient at using the system, which makes things automate easier, which makes leveraging your business and leveraging NetSuite to make it grow even better. There was actually a really great quote from Gary, and he talked about how um, you boost your growth, that there's a large number, a very high percentage of companies that grow immediately after they start leveraging the full suite um, and getting into that sweetness. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was the expansion of Sweet Answers. You know, as you're learning and growing, you're going to need some help sometimes. And we've expanded those offerings with Sweet Answers so that when you have a question, we have more video, we have more articles, we have more help for you to support you to keep going and to keep growing your business. We talked about automation from end to end, inventory planning, warehouse operations, customization, financial planning. I mean, and then I think the best part about it was the insights we talked about. We talked about NetSuite Analytics Warehouse house and how it can look into your business because it all goes into the system it all talks to one another and it makes suggestions for you it's like having an expert at your fingertips somebody who's anticipating your needs anticipating what you need to grow and do better and that makes you have data driven decisions I mean what is better than that right it's basically saying here's the proof here's what you need here's gonna help here's the thing that's gonna help you grow and do really well we talked about detecting security threats, which is huge right now, making sure your data stays safe um, and protecting your business. Um, and then we talked about uh, supply chain, right, and all of the craziness and issues that can happen with that and how so much of that is now automated with us. And we talked about some of our new uh, offerings, Sweet People, OCI. I could talk about this for days and days and days, Kindles, as you can see, but I think you have somebody who's going to really, really bring it home for us in studio right now. So so back to you, Kendall. Well, Christina, he just hopped off stage, literally just hopped off stage from delivering an exceptional product keynote. We're here with NetSuite SVP of product management, Gary Wiesinger. Hi, Gary. Are you, do you need to like catch your breath for a second? A little bit. <laughs> you literally right. just sprinted here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing is, is it I did not know that you were an avid gamer. How do you find the time? Well, it, uh, I was mainly an avid gamer back when video games looked like my opening video. <laughs> it's gotten a little harder with uh, with life and kids and everything else, but I still still sneak in a game here or there. Yeah, well, uh, I also I asked Fritz this while we were watching. Do you actually drive a motorcycle? No. Oh, okay. I was like, wow, I wonder if he actually has one at home. So I just had to ask that. I was thinking that, he's a Harley guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, totally. yeah. My, one of my brothers is a big Harley guy. Okay, um, there you so go. So sadly, uh, sadly, no. But you know, who knows? Well, maybe maybe uh, this will be the inspiration. Yeah, there it's safer go. that way. Yeah, that's yeah. We need you here yeah. at NetSuite. The so. virtual <laughs> motorcycle is a hell of a lot safer than that. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Uh, so tell us what inspired this idea of the power-ups uh, when you're thinking about NetSuite products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, it was a it was a play on the video game theme, but it accurately describes what how we think about those those. Sometimes we call them our hows, how we innovate, how we delight our customers. 
and it describes the impact they have. They, they power up the benefit of NetSuite and they power up our customers' success. So um, it was sort of fortuitous, but, but it really does, I mean, these, these things boost um, our customer uh, success. And as I talked about, there's some interdependence um, in them in that you know, ease and automation and, and in insight you know, are important power-ups, but then intelligence powers, further powers those up. And then most importantly, sweetness powers all of them up. And um, it is amazing the power of the sweet to you know, make each of those more powerful. Well, I want to talk about sweetness. We're going to yeah. come back to some of those other topics, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but in terms of sweetness, you, I'm not going to make you recite the numbers yeah. off the top of your head, but some interesting numbers around both service companies yeah, yeah, and yeah. product companies. Yeah. The, you know, 66%, 150%, oh. five times. Wow. Okay, yeah, look at that. Look at I that. did, I did you know, rehearse once or twice before the, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah, I think it was something like, you know, I, I, I don't remember all the products, but you know, if you use fixed assets. Yeah. Uh, Expenses and, okay. Now, yeah. now, now you're really testing me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I couldn't write it, it down was, fast it was, uh, enough. Advanced financials, advanced revenue management, and that expense is 66% faster than if we had in one world and uh, a couple others, we get to the 150, per, yeah. They, yeah, people yeah. heard it. We don't need to repeat yeah. it. Yeah, but but that data is is yeah. really kind of underscores the value of it. And what I'm wondering is, at what point in the customer journey does that idea of sweetness? Yeah. I mean, we hope they buy NetSuite right. for the sweetness, right? But you know, sometimes it takes time for yeah. them to realize, okay, you know what? I could get even more value if I add this. So when does that aha moment usually happen? Yeah. Uh, I think it happens in multiple phases. It, it starts even at the first purchase decision. We find that a lot of our, our customers or prospects choose NetSuite because they see, they share really the vision of the suite and they see the benefit. Now, that doesn't mean they, they purchase the whole suite up front. Uh, it doesn't mean they, certainly they implement the whole suite up front, but they're buying typically financials first with a, the vision of, of uh, implementing uh, more of the suite over time. And then we work with them through our uh, business, uh, AMO business reviews, through ACS, uh, and other mechanisms to help them decide, you know, uh, based on their evolution, you know, when it makes sense for them to, to take on more of the suite. It's one of the things that we've evolved in, in our thinking over time. We used to go in and say, look at the suite, buy the suite. Yeah. And, and, um, and people you know, bought the vision, they, they bought into the vision, so they bought the suite. And then they were overwhelmed by you know, the implementation, by, by changing that much of their business process on day one. Right. We said, you know, okay, hold on, we're not, we're not doing them a service by, by doing it this way. You know, let's, you know, yeah, help them see the vision, but then help them progressively uh, get to to you know the full the full suite. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I say this all the time, but I have the honor of talking with our customers all the time, and that's the exact thing I hear. One of their favorite things about NetSuite yeah. is we come in and we start with exactly what we need in that moment, but then we yeah. know as we hit each new level of growth, yeah. we're going to be able to unlock more unlock more capabilities. That's for exactly them. right. That's exactly um, right. And speaking of new customers, mm -hmm. uh, NetSuite Guided Learning is yeah. going to have some real benefits there. Right. Can you tell me a little bit more about the thinking there? Yeah. No, it's it's um, it's super cool uh, technology that that we're leveraging an Oracle technology to to create and working with an Oracle team. Um, you know, one, we find when we've done research and insight into how users learn and prefer to learn, and we've done a lot of research into it. Um, and not surprisingly, the number one way people learn is on the job and yeah. from other people, other users. Well, NetSuite guided learning is is a little bit like you know a, a coworker. You know, teaching you on the job. You know, right. Instead of going to, and, and there, there's no bad way to learn. You know, we have classes, we have online classes, we have the documentation, we have sweet answers. They're all you know, fantastic and important. And they're different learning styles for different people. Um, but that isn't the right style for some people. And uh, so this, you know, for people who want more want to learn on the job kind of step by step, you know, it allows them to do exactly that. And Craig showed it, you know, showed it in, in uh, Portuguese uh, and, and even, you know, I don't speak Portuguese, but I could understand what, what was happening. You know, it goes step by step. And then, you know, once you know how to use, how to complete a task, you can clear that out. It doesn't, it won't be there forever. Right. Um, but it helps you and that's, we can tailor that by country, by vertical. Uh, even customers themselves can tailor it to their own unique business processes if they want to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, does it, so again, going back to kind of what we just talked about. So. We're, we start with kind of this guided learning, then we're taking more, uh, the full suite ahead, really, yeah, is yeah, the that's concept. Right, that's right. Um, 
Does it ever shock you the level of growth that customers reach, like as they continue to unlock more and more? Yeah. Well, in some of the numbers that that you know, Fritz was was citing, um, the 66 percent, 150 percent, five times you know growth of products companies. Yes and no. You know, yes in that. Before we pulled the numbers, I wasn't expecting them to be that high. We, we did uh, do some research to say, okay, you know, let's look at this. And I, we were expecting good numbers. I wasn't expecting five times. So, you know, yes, uh, from that perspective. No, in that we, we, we know the, the vision of the suite works. We know it's right. You know, we've seen firsthand the benefit of the companies that have adopted more of the suite and eliminated the hairball and gotten those benefits of, of, of sweetness um, and uh, collaboration across uh, units, uh, uh, departments, and insight across departments, and automation across it, and we see it, and so that from that perspective, no, you know, it's not surprising. Now, certainly there's some causation and correlation in there. I'm not going to claim that that's entirely based on on the suite. It's not. I mean, those are fantastic customers who, uh, they, they deserve most of the credit, um, uh, and a customer who's growing fast is more likely to say, okay, I'm evolving to that next stage, and I'm, right. I'm going to adopt something. So there's some correlation there, but I firmly believe there's also some causation. I do believe the suite helps uh, in that growth. You're, you're so, that is, so we had a moment yesterday with um, our customer Chicago Music Exchange. Uh -huh. We had them on, we, we showed a video of This Is How We NetSuite, which is our new series here at NetSuite TV, but it dives into uh -huh. how they customize the product to really meet their individual needs. Yeah. Um, and one, the, the CEO of that company, Andrew um, Yonke, hey Andrew, if you're watching, <laughs> he said, the thing about NetSuite is, is it's not just the product, it's us, we had, we also have to know how to sure. level up with the product side by side, which so I think that's an act a great point. Yeah. They, it's the customer who's doing, you know, who's doing the amazing thing because you also have to be in a great place. We're just enabling exactly. their superpowers. That's exactly, exactly. right. Exactly, exactly. I want to jump back to intelligence, which you spent yeah. a lot of time setting up in, right. in the very beginning and some of the different ways we look at it. Mm -hmm. And I also thought it was interesting as we, as we kind of went through the keynote, you know, just for example, Hanif talked about um, automatic approvals from yep. from timesheets to payroll, yep. right? Um, you showed an example of invoice approvals. You got 70 invoices. Yep. Do you apply some rules? Maybe assist down to four, right? That's right. That's right. And 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 often I think sometimes the intelligence and how it leads to automation. The best intelligence is the ones that you don't even notice exactly anymore, right? right? Um, but you you know. So how do how do we get customers to kind of understand the value that we're constantly looking at mm -hmm. in each and every part of the product? Yeah, well, um, you you make a very good point and good job remembering the the numbers of invoices from the the demo. You clearly paid attention. <laughs> uh, good to see. Um, I talked about this and it's really important. You know, we all talk about automation. The industry talks about robotic process automation. It's a big you know it's a buzzword. I think there's more talk, like a lot of these things, there's more talk than action um, for, for at least the others. But um, you know, the thing that I don't think people, others pay atten enough attention to is the emotion behind it yeah. and the trust, all right? And, and it's, it's true for automation, but it's also especially true for intelligence, right? AI and ML can do a lot of things that, that um, users wouldn't trust it to do. Right. And maybe it does it better, but if they don't trust it, it doesn't matter that we built it because they won't use it. They'll turn it off. I mean, we've all experienced, you know, apps or or you know services where it'll do. It, you know, I'll, we'll do this for you. And what do we do? We we turn it off because we're like, I I don't know what's happening behind the scenes. I don't trust that it's going to do the right thing for me. Right. right? Um, so part of what we need to do in creating automation and creating intelligence is give them the right control and visibility so they have the trust that yeah you know, that is going to do what I want it to do uh, and I'm going to have still have the right the right control around it so we put a lot of emphasis into into that and, and I just you know we talked about guided learning and you talked about you know NetSuite as that other co-worker watching you right, and in, right. in the keynote right. you talked about you know it watching what you're doing and learning from it and then taking that over yeah. that kind of freaks people out a little bit too <laughs> Yeah, it, you're, you're right, and it's the same kind of thing. Um, I mean, you know, Big Brother and, and you know, all kinds of stuff. And so it all has to be done with their um, permission. You know, they, right. they opt in. We're not going to do any of this stuff without them, uh, without them knowing. And again, visibility um, with any of our automations, uh, any of our intelligence, we, we um, give them areas where they can go in and see what we've done and, and why we've done it. 
Um, and so, you know, yes, it, it, it does make people nervous. You know, that, some of that will, will uh, subside over time as people get more in, just in our lives, get more comfortable with, with AI ML. Um, but it, it is an important thing. Right? It's something we think about a lot. You know, like last year I talked about design thinking and how much we believe in that. And one of the, the principles of a design thinking is, is embracing the emotions of your user, your customer. And not just, in empathy, not just understanding what they need, but also how they feel. And again, I think you know, that's, that's true everywhere, but it's uh, you know, more true in, in automation and intelligence than, than anywhere else, and it's something we are working hard to do. I mean, that's, that's innovative in itself. You don't hear a lot of software companies talking about empathy yeah. and emotion. And emotion, exactly. Yeah, so I mean, I'm, imp I'm fully impressed yeah. by that. I think that's, I think that's amazing. And even that's probably making some people a little I know. Yeah. <laughs> how do they know how I feel? It's okay, why, it's okay, yeah. be in touch. Why do they care mind. how I feel? I just wanted to add my numbers together. Exactly, exactly. Um, so there was a lot of talk about kind of some of this international expansion that's happening. We heard about you know NSAW, for example, international compliance. Yep. Is there anything else you want to hit on in terms of how we're growing and scaling internationally, and well, we're doing a bunch of different things. But you know, the big exciting announcement is is Brazil. Right. We've been working on that for a while. Um, it, as Craig showed, um, it is an insanely complex regulatory environment, and um, which creates a lot of pain for our customers, which means it creates a lot of responsibility for us, because they hire us to uh, manage and automate their their compliance for them. And so it's been a ton of work over several years. Um, uh, and, and it's, but it's also a good opportunity for us to help many others and uh, it's a good business opportunity for us. It's the eighth largest economy in the world. Yeah. So we're super excited about that, um, but we're all continuing to, to expand and improve our compliance elsewhere. And we're seeing a lot of countries are um, increasing their kind of volume of compliance, if you will, at a pace I've never seen. Yeah. And some of that is because it's enabled by technology because technology can automate things like e-invoicing, they say, okay, well, you know, now we're going to re require you to, to send it to us and you have to do all these things um, within that invoice before you can send it to us. It would have been too onerous even for them, the government entity in the past to do that. And, um, and so, you know, again, technology is enabling them to put more you know, uh, kind of friction on their, uh, their constituents. That's where they come to us, our customers come to us and say, you know, NetSuite, can you help with this? And that's, that's our responsibility to, to take care of them. Yeah. I wanted to, um, I, I don't want this moment to slip, and I, I was a little surprised, in a good way, to hear Elham talk about uh, OCI and, yeah. and how many of our customers are now on OCI. Because I remember just yesterday, yeah, yeah, yeah. we were just starting out. Yeah. And now she said most of our customers that's right. are in an OCI data center. It's like, wow, that, that, it's huge. that happened overnight, it felt, uh, it, it felt like. It, uh, I'm sure it, it did. It feels that way to, to, to you and me. It doesn't feel that way to our cloud ops team who's been working for sure. tirelessly for, for years and the OCI team. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, we've moved relatively quickly on it and um, uh, still have work to do, but uh, it's been a huge win, huge win for, for our customers. I mean, NetSuite, we're, we're not a data center operations business, right? We're in the business of, of making applications that, that help our, our customers run their businesses. Before the Oracle acquisition, we chose to be, we needed to be in the data center operations business. Well, we don't have to be directly in that business anymore. Oracle, the other parts of Oracle are, are doing that for us and right. with you know, some uh, world-class uh, technology that, yeah. that's still bringing you know, massive benefits. So yeah, OCI is a huge win for, for our customers. Yeah, and more and more data centers all over the place, yeah. which uh, is the, a huge growth. The pace at which we, can, can, we are spinning up data centers, you know, 11 in five cities in the last 12 months. Yeah. When we um, got acquired, we had like six total. Yeah. For, after, after 18 years or something of being, you know, something like that. Um, have to check my history books. Um, in business, and and now um, you know, we're adding 11 in in, in a year. I mean, yeah. No way we could have done that without OCI. We talked to Nick Mooney and Chris yeah. Blum yesterday, yeah. and yeah. they were saying what it takes six days or something to build to to build a data center, but then it's all the testing. The, the long right. it's the long part of it is the testing and all right. of that for six months. Um, now before we head out here, Gary, um, I have to mention something. All right, I'm a little nervous. <clears throat> can you can we see your socks? You you you, you may. <laughs> Um, Go to the, oh, right. sure, yeah, 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 here. We'll Where show, am I going? Yeah, yeah, we'll show that right camera there. right there. Let's see these socks, let's see these socks. These are my, these are my sweet Stanley socks. I love it. From, or my super, I'm sorry, Super Stanley <laughs> socks super. from uh, NetSuite last year. I bought them in the sweet store. Yes. 
and they, they give me a little extra something when right. I go on stage for, for Sweet World. I thought you were going to call them your power up sauce. <laughs> they, they, they are. I, I, I will now. <laughs> yeah. But I don't want to take you know, any credit away from Super Stan. Right, exactly. He, he you know, it's, it's, exactly. I'm inspired by Super Stan. to have more energy this, this year than last. <laughs> There's, so there's something. I, I, I think it's the socks. I yeah. think it's the socks. Well, once again, Gary, we're blown away by the innovation coming out of product. Thank you for sharing with us. We're going to take a quick break, but when we return, remember those crazy moments I asked Kendall about? Well, Simon and Christina are.